Are you stuck at home right now like the rest of us? Are you under quarantine? It is March 24th and we are currently on day five of quarantine here in San Luis Obispo County. Um, we have been missing seeing everyone here in Paso Robles at the tasting room, so we thought we would try to do something to come to you. So here we are in our bunker in parts unknown, very sanitary environment for some wine tasting. So what we thought we would do is uh, start with a YouTube video and then hopefully we'll be able to do some YouTube live uh, tomorrow. And if you guys have any other suggestions on how to do group tastings together with feedback and everything, uh, let us know. Uh, so each day we are going to do a quarantine varietal of the day. We're also gonna just talk a little bit about the background, the winemaking of that wine, taste it. Uh, and then we're gonna give you some tips that we all got um, on dealing with our shelter in place initiatives. So without any ado, let's see if anyone can join us today. Is anyone here? Oh, hey dad, how's it going? Now because we're supposed to be maintaining our distance, we have our dad stand in. This is my dad, John Pianetta. He founded the winery and he's gonna be tasting along with us, smiling the whole time. So we're excited. So our quarantine varietal of the day today is quarantine shelter in place Sangiovese. So let's talk a little bit about Sangiovese. Hopefully you guys have some in your home as well. I'm gonna pour myself a nice Pianetta glass Sangiovese in my sanitary gloves, which match my orange hat. I'm gonna call this my survival hat today. So Sangiovese is one of the most popular wines that we sell here at Pianetta. Um, we source it locally on the Central Coast. Uh, the particular vintage of Sangiovese I just poured is the 2017. Hopefully you all can see that. Um, now Sangiovese is originally from Italy, as is my dad's family, um, but this comes from the northern central part of the boot here, kind of in the Tuscany region, uh, most, lar uh, most popular in Chianti. Not as much planted in California and the New World, as they say, um, but it is a pleasant flavor, very light, um, goes with a lot of food, so we really enjoy doing it. Um, we started making Sangiovese in 2003, and we started with two barrels of Sangiovese, uh, and since then, it's just grown and grown and grown. Uh, this is the first variety that we ever brought in from another vineyard, so uh, it's kind of a special place for us. So let's go ahead and swirl. Let's see if y'all. So you're getting like some like little garnet red color, but it's you know it's definitely not as dark as you know your petite Syrah, your Syrahs, and it's definitely a little more of a red hue, um, not like an orange. Younger wines tend to be more bright in color. Um, but let's go ahead and smell. The other reason we're doing this is so if you are at home alone, like I am most nights, now you have someone you can taste some wine with. Because when you're watching a video, that means that you're not alone, right? That's what I think anyway. So the nose on this wine is very bright. You have a lot of bright cherry, a little strawberry, a um, little bit of, let's see, a little cherry. It's very fruity on the nose. So you're getting a lot of fruit flavors, bright fruit flavors. This is especially a younger wine. And then once we go ahead and taste this wine, hmm, the first taste is kind of a good icebreaker, so I like to taste it twice, just to be sure. Very soft wine. Um, there's a lot of acidity on the finish of this wine, and that to me is just representative of food pairing wines. So you want a lot of acidity to cut through heavier sauces, meats, fats, cheese, things like that. Um, it doesn't have like that big bright fruit presence that you have on the nose, on the body of the wine or in, over the palate. Um, it kind of has like subtle notes. So uh, maybe a little bit of like, um, Rich, I don't know. Let me try again. So at that, I get a little more dried fruit. Um, 
maybe some uh, little hints of savoriness, but not, not anything real big. So this is very light bodied, but um, good acidity on the finish. So for people who are new to red wine, this is a great icebreaker if you're just kind of breaking out of that white wine um, standard. But it's, uh, I don't know, it's just a very pleasant drinking wine. And amid the situations that we're faced with today, it's a good company to have at home for an everyday beverage. So 2017 Sangiovese, uh, this particular grape came from the White Hawk Vineyard down in Los Alamos, which is just south of Paso Robles, which is where we, well, I don't know where we are. We are in parts unknown. If we were at the tasting room, we would be about mm, 60, 75 miles north of Los Alamos. So, but we don't know where we are because we're on lockdown. So, um, thank you for joining me for the tasting. And now, as I promised, I thought I would give you guys some tips for dealing with your shelter in place, which I believe everyone at this point, in the US anyways, is on. So, um, when I first went into lockdown, we are on day five, uh, everyone was really concerned about staying busy. Um, I, of course, have a lot of projects, which I have not quite gotten to, so what do I do? I waste my time and find a bunch of things on the internet to keep me busy. So, uh, I stumbled upon a website called Carson.org. I have no idea what it is, but uh, these are 10 tips to shelter in place with children. I don't necessarily have that, but I have a lot of personalities. <laughs> okay, number one, pine cone peanut butter bird seed feeders. Okay, I remember that. That was third grade for me, which was not too long ago, but uh, okay, that'll take maybe 30 minutes, an hour if you're lucky. Number two, make a fort. I would make a fort. That sounds pretty fun. That could take, you know, 30 minutes or it could take all day and into the weekend. So, you know, depends on your kids, I guess. Number three, have the children create their own board game and then teach you the rules. I'm going to go with a hard pass on number three for me. I don't like to play games that kids invent, not gonna lie, but uh, if you're up for it, I suggest a lot of vino. Number four, bake cookies. Always, always a good choice. Um, hmm, not sure what kind of cookies I'd bake. Chocolate chip is always the go-to. Number five, make up cycled birdhouses from plastic gallon jugs. I'm assuming they mean make recycled birdhouses out of plastic gallon jugs. Again, a lot of fun, probably won't take very long. Number six, depending on the age and reading ability of your child, you can turn them into amateur or anthologist with only bird watching, uh, or only with a bird watching book, a notebook, and to write their field notes and a pair of binoculars. We have a lot of bird heavy suggestions in this website, so I'm assuming that uh, this must be bird related. Bird watching, that sounds good, why not? Um, if you're in a area that is conducive to bird watching, that is another activity that could take days. So good luck. I don't know much about that other than exactly what they said. Give them a bird watching book, a notebook, uh, a pencil of course, and binoculars. These are all things that can still be done while in seclusion as long as you don't run into anybody. And if you do, make sure you keep your six foot distance. Take them on a hike. You could probably do numbers six and seven together, but uh, that's just me. Once again, good option. I'll definitely be taking some hikes. Length of time, who knows? One of the favorite things that I do at the end of my hike, I tend to take a bottle of wine with me and enjoy a glass at the top of the view. Uh, number eight, workbooks. You definitely don't want their little brains to flesh out everything they've learned in school this year, and workbooks are a great way to keep them in the practice if their schools haven't assigned them anything. Um, depending on when your kid goes back to school, sure, workbooks are great. I think it's a good idea. I loved school, but at the same time, I don't think a lot of kids are going back to school this year, so take it or leave it, number eight. 
Number nine is chores. Absolutely, I'm a product of child labor. We didn't have to have any kind of house cleaning or whatever because us kids did it. So highly recommend that. And for number nine, if you need someone else's house to clean, I will sanitize my house and they can come over here and uh, clean my house. Number 10, this is one of my favorites. When all else fails, put your child outside in a safe enclosed area and lock the door. Now, I don't think I should advocate that, but I think in a perfect world, number 10 would be a good option. So at any rate, reading through all of these things, I do highly suggest that you guys pick up some Sangiovese somewhere, preferably Pianetta. And uh, I hope that uh, you're having a great time living in seclusion. Cheers, and we'll see you for the next quarantine variety of the day.